Hello, people. Hello, hello, hello. Happy, what is it today? Thursday already? Thursday already. How's on? Oh, I can't believe it. Time just flies. Um, I'm here to do an announcement, okay? I have some announcement videos that I got to share with you guys. It's just so important to get these messages out. And so I'm going to be just playing glimpses of some messages. And then you have to go and listen to the rest yourself because they are too long. I was just on uh, a message here this morning, a live message. I was listening to from uh, this is a lady named June Knight, okay? So June Knight is on here uh, doing a video. She's doing a, uh, she have two here at WATB TV End Times Watchman Conference they had on June 8th. With, you know, various people here we know, uh, Holy Spirit Wynn, uh, Celeste, uh, Pamela, I don't, I'm, I'm familiar with her, I've seen her maybe once, but not familiar with her that much, but, and then Brock and Laura Knight, and then also uh, Stephen DeNoon and his wife. So I want you guys to listen to this conference if you want to, or can. Uh, a lot of material coming out of this. I'm going to play a little bit of it coming from uh, Stephen DeNoon and his wife. We, I, I, showed it on another, I showed it on another video and uh, about what he was talking about the White House when June Knight was on there. But I want you guys to go listen to all these things going on. And then so I'm going to be playing a little bit of June Knight here live from this morning. Just a little bit of it, people. Can't play all of it. And then also I'm going to be playing... Another one coming from Gwendolyn Song, and she's talking about the warning to the United States. They will shut down your power. And so my friend over in Ocala, Florida, my own, my only city, my only city that, where I was born, uh, she also had a, a dream vision about them shutting us out, uh, internet going off, internet coming on, internet going off, internet coming on. And the, the power is just going off and on, off and on. So my friend over in Ocala, and she know who I'm talking about. I'm not going to say her name. But anyway, uh, a lot of people having these revelations about the power going out. So I thought it was interesting. And so the major key is to be here today to tell you guys to prepare and have water in your house. As she tell you on her video, we should be having water for six weeks. So we need to be getting waters in our households uh, or whatever we can do. I know a lot of you guys live out in mega cities, man, mega cities, uh, you know, uh, all over America. Some people live out in rural areas. Some people live way out of nowhere. But, you know, we need to be preparing for water, water, people. So I'm going to go ahead and play her first. And uh, I'm not going to play any news today or anything. I will put some news in the description box. I'm having a real busy day today. I have a lot of things behind. I got to catch up on some things. So I'm going to go ahead and just play these videos a little bit and go off here. And I hope you guys will get this video and listen because they are shutting us down on the Internet. A lot of people are having flags and their stuff is being taken off the Internet. So we just have to work while we can, work while we can, work while we can, work while it is day, people, as the times are flying before us. So let me go ahead and mute these out and play these, and, and uh, then I'm going to just go. I can't be here too long. So let me go ahead and just show a little bit of what I'm talking about, what it'll kind of inspire you, uh, inspire you guys to listen, okay? So let me go ahead and um, mute this out. Okay. Good morning, brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus. This is Sister Gwendolyn Song, and I greet you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. This morning, I want to share a Rima word with you about the power grid going down in the USA. First, I'm going to read a passage. The Lord asked me to read John 15, verses 18 through 25. If the world hates you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world, the world would love its own. Yet, because you are not of the world, but I chose you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. Remember the word that I said to you, a servant is not greater than his master. 
If they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they kept my word, they will keep yours also. But all these things they will do to you for my name's sake, because they do not know him who sent me. If I had not come and spoken to them, they would have no sin. But now they have no excuse for their sin. He who hates me hates my father also. If I had not done among them the works which no one else did, they would have no sin. But now they have been seen and also both hated by me and my father. But this happened that the word might be fulfilled, which is written in the law. They hated me without a cause. Now I'm going to share this Rima message. And before I do that, the Lord had given me a vision this morning. And in the vision, there was a, a little child, a small child, who had a tracheostomy tube. And he required a lot of medical attention. Uh, the kind of medical attention that necessitates having electricity. And so what the Lord was showing me is that many people who are receiving medical care in their homes will have to go to the hospitals to uh, continue on with their medical care. All right. To my dearest children who are upon the earth at the greatest time in the history of mankind, Children, what you are seeing on your TVs and computer screens is not reality. Much of it is staged drama. It is the folly of demons and their high counsel. Let me repeat that again. Much of it is not real. They have a high counsel. They have their chess pieces all across the earth to do their bidding. While behind the scenes, they watch your responses and test your resolve. I want to elaborate on one of their plans this day. I want to share with you that in the days ahead, they will turn off all of the electricity to the USA. It is a test, dearest ones. It is their way of showing that they have the upper hand. I want to prepare many of you for this time. Let me stress this point today, dearest ones. There are many of my children who will not be able to plan for this event, and I will have my holy angels watching over you in your various situations. But for those of you who are able-bodied, I am speaking to you. I want you to make sure that you have six weeks of water on hand. Begin making preparations now. I want you to have the ability to make a small fire to boil water and keep yourselves warm. You may need to have more thermal clothing. I want you to be able to be somewhat comfortable and yet at the same time to be able to preach my gospel message to those that I send to you. It is wise to practice living without electricity, dearest ones. Practice what situations you will encounter. Practicing what situations you will encounter will help you to transition through this time better. Expect to be helping others if I have given you the means. Expect to be fasting and sharing your resources with others also. I am speaking on this event because it is the kindness of the Father's heart. Please hear your Lord and Savior this day. Begin making preparations now. Lord Jesus, the maker of heaven and earth. All right, so friends, that's the message from the Lord. And I want to just remind everyone the two greatest commandments that sum up all the prophets and the Ten Commandments. And that is to love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, all thy soul, and with all thy mind. And to do unto others as you would have others do unto you. All right, that's it for now. Have a great day in the Lord. Shalom. This is my lovely wife, Laura. Hi. Okay, we're coming to you from Georgia. And we, our night family ministries is just 
us and our family and our farm, okay? And we love sharing the gospel. And we have been blessed by these people here sharing. Up on this screen here, you'll see Miss Pamela. That's Pamela Ray Shuffert, I believe is to say her name. She's a wonderful it's woman. Coming out of <laughs> Shuffert. Yes. And you're coming out of Wyoming or Montana. No, I'm out of Montana, the great patriot state. Yeehaw! <laughs> Montana. <laughs> and then we have on here as well, Mr. Jeff Byerly. Would you like to share where you're coming from, Mr. Jeff? I am coming from Western New York, which is the opposite side from New York City. Because Oh, man, that is East Coast from the West Coast. I know then, what's going to happen in New York City. My so. goodness. <laughs> That's right. It's going down. The next wow. one we have is Dr. June Knight, my lovely mother. Mom, would you like to share us where you're coming from? Yes. Hello, everyone. I'm just outside of Atlanta, Georgia, here with my son on his farm. And I am with We Are The Bride Ministries, which is WATV TV, WATV Radio, and Go Tree House Publishing. All right. Well, thank you for being here, Mother. And then we have Miss Celeste Solom. She's coming out of the West Coast as well, correct? Well, kind of, sort of. I'm in Montana also, <laughs> in the beautiful Rocky Mountains. Wow, I bet it's gorgeous over there. Well, thank you for being on here. We are honored. And then we have Israeli news. We have Mr. Steve and John Adenoon. Thank you guys for being here as well. And where are you guys coming out of? We're coming out of the miserable state of Florida, down around Orlando. <laughs> But we don't have any grizzly bears to eat us here, so that's <laughs> all. You guys have black bears down there, though, don't you? They're building a boat because when Florida goes underwater, yeah, oh. be, surfboard <laughs> something. You know, you got to have a way out. Well, we go to we go there for vacation, so there's there's good for a day or two, but then you can't live there, you know. No the hurricanes come, so guys, we are going to get started. This is an end time. Uh, prophetic, I guess you could say, but really we are in some end times right now. We're in some crazy scenarios in our world that we've all seen, and we're going to get right down to the nitty gritty here. Each of these people here have respective fields where they have had a lot of experience or God has been speaking to them or one or the other, they have had things happen to them and they have become awake. And we are hoping to summarize what you guys need to hear and see that what's going on right now in the world around you, it is happening, okay? I'd like to ask each of these people one question, and that is this. What did these people need to know from what you're seeing and what you're experiencing? What is going on right now that they need to be awake and aware, maybe the top three things that we need to know from yours? And if we could start with you, Miss Celeste, that would be amazing if you could share with us. What do we need to know from what you're seeing? Okay, so I just posted just before we came on um, about the mark of the beast and the link between the hydrogel and the quantum dots and the masks. And so that is like number one. I just broke that uh, today. And then um, probably many people are realizing like I'm not acting quite right. Um, you know, maybe I have a little bit of depression or something else. Uh, so, something in my spirit is troubling me. Well, tomorrow's breaking news is going to be that there I uncovered a torture technique that is being applied to Americans uh, specifically, but to the people of the world in order to change our behavior and get us to forsake our God. Um, wow. And accept the global system. So tomorrow I'm going to be going into that torture technique that is being applied to all of us. And you're going to be able to see it just clear as day. And then the other thing is that we need to study history because we're at this time period in time where there's no difference in, uh, there is no time. Time is irrelevant. The events and the forces of creation <laughs> are going to be used in this end time scenario. So I took this little rabbit trail. Well, actually the Lord took me on the little rabbit trail. He said, I want you to study Deuteronomy 32. And so I did and I dug in and it actually has a lot to do with Revelation 13. 
um, an ancient civilization in Turkey called Golbeki Tepe. And that's part of our hidden history. And that's got complete with intrigue because the person that was running the dig um, died. Um, some people believe mysteriously the Paracas skulls. Those are those elongated skulls that people are talking about. And so what did the ancient um, peoples know and about the, uh, this battle between good and evil? And I will tell you the stuff that I got coming out about, and it fits in with Deuteronomy 32 and Revelation 13 is explosive. It is, it's like this wonderful adventure, um, but it plays into the end times. So we need to be serious students of history, biblical history, and just the other holocausts in history uh, so that, that we can be prepared. Thank you, thank you. I'd like to go to Israeli news right now. You guys have well, okay, Steve, you shared things concerning what is happening in Israel and how it is going on with things happening in our church and how the Pope Jews or Hebrews and the church or Christianity is all blended together. And what do you guys think people need to know about what's currently happening? You know, it's kind of interesting that you, you brought that up, Brock, because uh, we had wrote just notes of the things that we were looking at ourselves of being of most importance. And that's the exact note I wrote on the paper that I have here in front of me here, uh, worded a little different, but it is the most serious uh, bringing about of a one world religion. Uh, we know we have a one world government or new world order, however people want to call that. I know in the Pentagon, they tell me they call it a one world government there. But the one world religion aspect is the most serious because what's happening today is there, there, there has been a major infiltration inside of Christianity in every walk that there is. They don't care whether you're Pentecostal, Catholic, Methodist, uh, even non-denomination, there has been an infiltration of uh, Talmudic rabbis that have infiltrated, even in Catholicism, to bring the, the children of God back underneath Talmudic rabbis of today. And when I, <clears throat> excuse me, first began to expose uh, the early stages, I did not realize that they were trying to bring us up underneath the rabbis. I thought that they were trying to bring all the churches underneath the Catholic Church, which they were doing. And then at the same time, the Catholic Church was forming the alliance called the Nostra Aetate with Israel. And as I began to really blast this about eight years ago, uh, Lori Cadoza Moore really come down heavy on me over this. She was a friend of ours. And so she flew to our house in Florida here and uh, had a private meeting with me, and she said, you've got to keep your mouth shut about these issues here, because we've been working on this for years. Um, I didn't know how deep this really went, though, and uh, as time went on, uh, I, I really discovered the ultimate part of this, though, was, was, yes, the church, the Catholic Church was working to bring all the denominations together under them, but the Pope of Rome would then submit his authority completely over to uh, the rabbinic uh, rabbis. And this is where the problem's coming in, which has also caused me to go back and really examine uh, biblical scriptures because I do understand the Hebrew language as well. So I look at that and I'm seeing a lot of prophecies that we have futurized actually were fulfilled by Christ or fulfilled by the apostles, things of this nature here. And uh, I see that we're about to put Jesus Christ to an open shame once again and crucify him afresh by oh. doing this, this very thing. And then also this new government that has, the, well, the coalition formed by Bibi Netanyahu and Gantz is kind of worrisome. We are getting word from the Jews in Israel who believe in Christ, who accepted Jesus as, as Messiah. Uh, that they're going to be under tremendous persecution because um, the, the, right. Orthodox, the Orthodox rabbis are gaining power in a state of Israel. And, and of course, in a 2014, in the year of 2014, Benjamin Netanyahu promised rabbis that mm -hmm. he's going to make Israel Talmudic state, that 
Israel will be under, under legal code of Talmud. And we know that officially in Talmud, uh, Christians are not well spoken of and Jesus is not well spoken of as well. And they do not want to tolerate Christianity or especially Jews who believe in Jesus in Israel. So they're persecuting them even though it's not really official, you, if you Google it, you can find some articles about it, but we, we did interview several Christians uh, from the state of Israel who admitted that they are being persecuted. Uh, they are being, uh, their passports are being taken away from them. Uh, They're under threat of even losing their, rela their, their um, citizenship because if they made Aliyah as Jews, to Israel, but they converted to Christianity or, or accepting Jesus as the Messiah, okay? That's right. Under Talmud, they're not considered Jews anymore, so they're threatening them to throw them out of the state of Israel. Uh, if a Jew is married to a non-Jew, Gentile, we had, we had a specific, yes. um, specific <clears throat> case. Actually, we've had more than one case, uh, right. several cases that we know of personally. Uh, in Israel, but one good friend of mine there, his wife was put in prison. Uh, they threatened her, and uh, to, to the, she had to leave her husband because he was born Jewish, even though he's a believer. Uh, and, uh, you know, they fought it, and finally they threw his wife out of the country. Yes, and, and they kept her in prison with only like one slice of bread a day, and they wouldn't provide any hygienic uh, mm -hmm. No, no toothbrush, no comb for the hair. Like they, it was like a tor torture basically until they threw her out of the country. So uh, he found himself without wife. And these kind of things are going on in, inside of the state of Israel. And the Christians in Israel are very worried, especially Jewish Christians, right. are very worried of, of this coalition of guns and Bibi Netanyahu because they are giving too much power to the religious right, which is Orthodox Judaism, or the rabbis. Right. And Ms. Pam, you had shared um, some knowledge on this. Would you like to further on that same topic and help us out with what you're seeing, please? Well, yes, I would. Uh, and thank you so much, Steve and Yana. Uh, to build on that, I, for years, was involved in outreach to Jewish communities, Russian Jews in Chicago and New York City, and uh, spent much time with Messianic Jews, studied some Hebrew, lived in Jerusalem a while. And, uh, you know, as I got involved in my investigative journalism of 25 years ago, I began to put together pieces through my years of being in the Jewish communities in Brooklyn, New York, where Lubavitch Chabad is, and many others who are feverishly working towards getting a new Messiah, and um, definitely bringing forth a new world order, which is really, in fact, for many Jews out there, not all. I will not stereotype to seek to bring uh, persecution against the Jews. That is despicable. But for many Jews, the new world order is really a Jew world order, their Jewish world government that they seek to set up from Jerusalem, taking various scriptures. And I've spent time among those Jews in Brooklyn, New York. And that is why they have the Noahide laws to get rid of millions of Gentiles who will not renounce their faith in Jesus because they believe that Jesus, according to the Talmud, was a terrible sinner, the product of a harlot and a Roman soldier. And the Talmud teaches this and says, you know, Christians should be killed. They believe there's no place for Christians who dare to confess Jesus is the son of God and divine. And therefore I began to put all of this together as I, uh, years later in my journalism, when I learned living in Jewish communities, living in Jerusalem a while and getting straight from people directly, uh, learning many, many things. But I will say, yes, absolutely, I have hardcore evidence that churches have been infiltrated by people of this satanic, globalist, New World Order agenda. And I got it straight from the horses' mouths. Former CIA, and by the way, the CIA is one of the most satanic, antichrist, kill the Christians, New World Order agency in the world today, a direct product of Nazis meeting at the Vonsi Conference, uh, to decide that if the New World Order failed under Nazi Germany and the agenda, and Hitler was a Satanist, uh, of the Illuminati, they would transport the whole agenda to America and thus was born the CIA. And ever since they've come to America, they have worked feverishly nonstop in every wicked capacity they can to bring America down, down, down under the new world 
order and they have infiltrated the churches. You've got the Jewish elements of the New World Order working feverishly to infiltrate Christian religious organizations and the Vatican. Then you have the Gentile side with these Nazis and their imports from Germany um, through Operation Paperclip, bringing thousands of German Nazis, SS, Gestapo, uh, through into America through Operation Paperclip to continue the Nazi, very fascist, Nazi, satanic, uh, antichrist agenda from the Gentile side for the New World Order agenda. And this one man, a 30-year vet in the CIA admitted, he said, oh, there's not one Christian institution or church or Bible college we have not infiltrated to a greater or lesser degree. And I found that the CIA, through my mini CI, ex CI, now Christians who came out to blow the whistle, uh, they told me they've got a computer. The CIA developed a cute computer to spy on every church across America. They have the names of every member, every pastor, and even rating Christians according to, well, are they fake? Are they lukewarm? Are they serious Christians? We are being spied upon by the intelligence community. And furthermore, they were planting their groomed spy agents, just like the KGB spied on churches in Russia. And I also speak Russian. Yagavarupa Ruska have spent years with Russian Christians in America and among Russian Jews. And I found out horror stories of the KGB uh, spies of Russia, the communist spies infiltrating the churches as pastors and priests. And Christians don't know it today. They have been deceived and hoodwinked, but the same thing is happening in America today, including in Pentecostal churches, Baptist churches, you would be shocked to know how many are actually Jesuits from the Vatican, Masons, Satanists, or uh, CIA groomed spies to monitor the faithful and eventually to lead them out under the guise of Romans 13, you must obey the government, out to FEMA camps, boxcars and shackles to be killed as resistors of the New World Order agenda. And my CIA sources coming out after many years of working for the New World Order agenda said, we all know what the FEMA camps are for in America. We know they are to terminate the future resistors of the New World Order as it comes down in America under martial law. And one source said, yes, and we hated the Christians so much because they stand in the way in America of our New World Order agenda. She said it will be, and I'm so sorry to quote this, but I must wake up the church because it's far more serious than you think. She said in under martial law, when they start arresting all these millions of people and Christians on the New World Order hit list, it will be brutal rape, torture, and death for the Christians that they hate so much in the CIA. Uh, these FEMA camps are death camps. They are not quarantine camps, medical camps. These are termination camps, much as Hitler's concentration camps and the horrors of the Holocaust or the Bolshevik communists and their horrors of the gulags. We have the same thing set up today. And this is a time for the church across America to get educated, wake up and realize the day and hour we live in and the dangers they're facing now. This is the most yeah. important thing I can tell them. Church, wake yeah. up and furthermore, quit playing church. If you're living for Jesus on Sunday and then living for the devil the rest of the week, you're not going to make it. You better repent and get right with God. Now there is far too much compromise in the churches of America today. And I know this from living on the grounds of a former prosperous, well-known Christian television ministry, which finally fell because of sin and is no more. But when I was there working there 13 years, I saw a cross-section working in that ministry with people coming from all over the world, all over America, of the churches in America today. And I could not believe the level of sin, compromise, cyber porn, adultery, fornication, and the sin that crept into the ministry itself, which is why it fell. It broke my heart and the heart of God. And I said, Lord, these people, they're not going to have the grace they need to stand against great persecution, including Revelations 20, verse 4. The souls are then beheaded for the witness of Jesus. I have been documenting with my military, Pentagon military family background. My father was in the Pentagon. I was born in the headquarters of the U.S. Air Force. I have many contacts out there. Yes, the rumors you've been hearing about guillotines in America are 100% correct and not urban legend. They tie in with Bible prophecy. Yeah, let me hold you right there, ma'am. Yes. Let me hold you right there because yeah. people listening right now are like, okay, we just heard about something from Celeste. I'm like, whoa. Okay, we just heard <laughs> things from Steve and John. <laughs> like, are you serious? They're doing that to Jews? And they're, this is a one world religion. Okay, whoa. Okay, and then you're saying CIA is of the devil and this stuff's happening. Now, these people or may not, they're like, okay, well, wouldn't Trump 
you know, be ridding all the evil force. Now, mom, <laughs> you night, you've been at the White House as a correspondent. These people are thinking, okay, is this conspiracy theory? Am I looking at people who know the Lord? Are they just out there? Now, here's what we want to do. Mom, you've been looking at executive orders every day and you literally yes. go live. You read everything that's going on in the government, executive order. You even take the time to read it in front of people. For yes. them to see if there's that people don't want to hear this, do they? We no, share this and people, they just block. So, Mom, what would you share that you are seeing from the White House and the ecumenical movement or the apostasy, this church movement that's moving towards these this one world religion and the government? What would you say to that? Well, I just want to say, first of all, to all the people that are watching, thank you for being with us tonight. Thank you to all the guests. Uh, we really appreciate all of you taking your time out to share with the bride across the world, not just the United States, but across the world, what is happening. All this affects the entire globe. So what I'm telling you is I'm very sorry to have to report to a lot of you that believe the narrative that you see on the mainstream media where Trump is, right. the, is the savior you know, he's the one, he's the only one that defends patriotism and he's the only <laughs> one that loves the country. You know what I mean? I, I'm very sorry to tell you that it is all propaganda. And yes. it was hard for me to find out that it was propaganda, but I'm telling you tonight that it is propaganda. So the top three things that I want you to know is this. Okay, first of all, the president is with the UN. Listen yes. to me. He is globalist. Okay, so you need to understand because a lot of people out there do not believe he's globalist because of the narrative that's being said on the TV. Amen. But he is globalist. He is working with the UN. He is putting in the infrastructure across the entire globe, not just the United States, but the entire globe of 5G, which is the power to the beast, the AI that is being set up right now, okay, Amen. that is going to bring such control uh, over all of us. We have not seen anything until they click that power switch. So I want you to know, number one, the president is not what he portrays himself to be. And Amen. I was... I felt like I was his number one fan. I did two national Christian marches for him, not for him, but, you know, believing in him. The last one was the Trump 2020 campaign. I did that in front of the White House, the Evangelicals for Trump. I'm the one that coined that, by the way, Evangelicals for Trump, Trump 2020. But I had to do it, even though I already found out that he was not for us because I had already had it planned, so I made sure when I went to that march that I obeyed the Lord and read the speech that God gave to me in a dream, warning the president one last time, him and the Republicans, if you do not turn from this perversion, judgment is going to hit this nation so fast. Well, they made the Amen. decision, and now we're, going, we're headed straight into this tsunami. So the first thing that I want you to know is that he is with you, and he is globalist. And I'm very sad. It took me six months of grieving to get over how sad I was asking him, my friends. Okay, number two, he is partnering with the vaccine implementation. There is a big uh, misunderstanding out there that he is not uh, for the vaccine implementations. They say, oh, Trump said we don't have to have the vaccine. Well, let me tell you something. He very much believes that you do. So just hear me Man. good, because he assigned a czar, a vaccine czar. So if he was not serious about his agreement with the UN, he would not get a czar, which is their full, their full mission is to make sure that this agenda is fulfilled. Then before he got the czar about three weeks prior, he formed, he called in a million man army. Listen to me. When he first called in that million man army, I'm like, what do we need with a million man army? This was back when they were telling everybody, oh, this is only temporary. 
You only need to wear your mask temporary. You only need to do your six foot distancing just temporary right now. And then he forms this million man army. And then a few weeks later, he appoints his czar. He has broken. The third thing I wanted to tell you is that he has broken the country up into four quarters. Listen to me. In 2020, the first quarter was the rollout of the vaccine where they said, this is the problem. They did the press conferences every day in the White House. I was with him every day. I had my team with me and we watched it and we examined everything he said. I read all the executive orders, everybody, et cetera, et cetera. So after the first quarter where he scared everybody to death with this huge virus that he's saying is happening, so he presented the problem. He formed his million-man army in that first quarter. So you're thinking, why are you doing this? The second quarter, he rolls out the testing. Now listen, he rolled out the testing in the second quarter where he says he wants everyone tested. So what he did is he put it all in his name. Everything has to be in his name. So he put it in his name and said, all of you governors, you have to fulfill this mandate before you can open up. So this is why you see a lot of the uh, governors out there going crazy trying to get it done so fast. That's why they're clamping down on people and they're so hard is because the president, yes, your president has put the clamp on them and said, you either do this or else. That's the second quarter is the testing. The third quarter he calls the transition to greatness. So I'm thinking, what is the transition to greatness? Okay, let's tell you what it is. First quarter, January, February, March. Identify the problem. Second quarter, April, May, June. We're finishing that quarter. Lawless is broke out by his will under his watch. Lawlessness is breaking out for a reason. <clears throat> now we're getting ready to step into the third quarter, which is July. What's happening in July? The peace deal they're saying is going to be finalized in July. They're going to split the land in Israel. Then we're stepping into September. In September, you're going to have all of the New World Order heads in Washington, D.C., including the apostasy. You are going to have all the apostasy, the uh, New Apostolic Reformation leaders are going to be in Washington for Jonathan Kahn's event called The Return with the Rabbis, which goes along with this Noahide Laws agenda that they have. Amen. You have all of them there in September. Then you're going to have the G7. The president, by the way, your president is the president of G7, which is the top seven global countries, which is underneath the UN. So all of you that think he's not globalist, you are sorely missing it. The G7 Amen. has been moved. It was supposed to be on June the 12th in the White House. And they moved it to September. Wonder why? Wonder why they're going to have the top seven leaders of the world, the heads of the UN in Washington, D.C. in September at the same time that they are going to have the apostasy leaders, the new world religion leaders there. Then you're going to have the new world economy leaders there. And then you're going to have the new world government leaders there, the economy. They are getting ready for a global vaccine conference all at the same time. All Amen. of the heads of the new world order are going to be in Washington, D.C. in September. That is the final month of the transition to greatness that the president is calling for. Then you go into the fourth quarter, which is the vaccine rollout. The fourth quarter is the part where they're going to finish their plan, their final plan in September, and then they're going to implement it in the fourth quarter. And the president has said about 2021, 5G will be implement, implemented. All of our uh, devices will be antiquated by then, and it's going to be a new world. So I'm just telling you all, that your president is not the way that he portrays himself, and he is 
Amen. Go ahead, Melissa. Okay, Amen. wow. All right. Now, Jeff, we all know you, brother, as someone who hears from the Lord. And we would yes. like to know, we saved you for last. We would like to know what do you hear the Lord saying right now in this present time? Well, the Lord um, impressed upon me to share a vision that he gave me back in November of 2018. And what it was, was there was a wave of blue on my one side, and there was a wave of red on the other side, and they crashed together. And at the bottom, it was purple. And then he said to me, the uh, Whore of Babylon is closed in purple and scarlet. And then I saw a sort of Damocles hanging. And it was like in the middle of the country in the purple. The country is all purple. The sword is Damocles fell into the center of the country. And there was a river of red flowing right down the middle. And I believe that this is coming to pass right now. Uh, um, as we all know, the riots and all that, well, they're not as bad as they will be. I guarantee you that. We have not seen Amen. Anything. And I know all of you That's right. on here know that. Um, Wow, people. I don't know. I was trying to click on that and went away. Uh, where uh, June Knight was, had a live uh, talk this morning. I will go ahead and put it in the description box. I don't know. You see, I just clicked it on and just went away. I, You know, the devil just trying to work against everything you try to do today. But I will put that. I will have to go and look for it now and put it in the description box. So she was talking today about some more things going on so i want you to go and listen to her latest uh message uh from the day so i would have to post it now i was going to try to play about five minutes of it but now i don't know where it is so i have to go dig it up and put it down for you guys to listen to uh and i will talk to you guys on another video uh, another time I just wanted to come and bring this material to you so uh, please take the time to listen to the rest of this conference and also to listen to her live video from this morning, uh, June night, Dr. June night. And so I'm just going to sign off now. And uh, you guys have a wonderful and blessed day. You know, we got all these things going around, uh, SWAT police and all kind of things can happen anytime, anywhere. So it's best to anoint yourself with oil and the Holy Spirit before you leave your house, pray over your household. Put the angels all around you when you go out. Put angels, angels all over. Father, put angels, angels over all your people today, all over the world, all over the world, all over America, all over every missionary, every prophet, every prophetess, every messenger, every watchman. I ask that you would cover us with your blood today. Keep us safe in these ter crazy, sorrowful, evil days. Uh, so we know that we'll be more than conquerors for you. It's not time to stand. It's not time to walk away, I mean, from the calling. It's not time to give up. It's not time to throw in the towel. It's not time to do any of those things. It's time to stand and let our callings and elections be sure. And so we thank you so much for your love for us, Father. Be with all the people watching. Uh, we ask that you supply all the people needs according to your riches and glory, whether it's physical, mentally, spiritually. And we just thank you, thank you, thank you for being the God that you are all by yourself. So I'm just going to say I bind Satan and all his evil angels below beyond beneath, mentioned and unmentioned, known and unknown. I bind all evil spirits on assignment against us in every way. We ask for your Holy, Holy Spirit to cover us, to call on us, 
to go into all the world and preach the gospel. And we just thank you so much, Father, for your love for us. So I'm going to say shalom, shalom. You guys have a wonderful and blessed day. Pray for your nations. Pray for America. Pray for your heart, your souls, your family members to get out of Babylon, to come out of these Sunday fake churches and Sunday uh, believers and pastors and false pe preachers. And, you know, it's time to come out, people. It's time to come out. So I really hope you can get some in uh, information out of these videos. So make sure you watch them all. And I'll talk to you guys in another video. My next video will be a mission report. So you guys have a wonderful and blessed day. I'm going to just say shalom, shalom. I love you guys so much. Shalom, shalom. Have a happy, happy uh, rest of Thursday. Okay, see you guys later. Shalom.